Good morning, YouTube. In today's video, we're gonna cover my process for inverting a negative and doing color correction until we can get that perfect positive. Now, before we get into it, I really wanted to quickly talk about why I use Photoshop versus some of the other softwares out there that might be a little bit more automated and maybe even part of your existing scanning workflow. The first several years that I was shooting film, I had an immense amount of frustration with negatives. I could never quite get the colors back to the way I wanted them. There would always be either a cyan or magenta cast, and the colors always looked a little bit muted. I probably have about four years worth of negatives sitting in a binder that I still haven't properly scanned because I did not learn this process until way down the road and I really struggled with it. So I wanted to make this video, but before I go into it, this negative that we're working with today is a little bit simpler. So I'm going to show the process today, but just know that in the future we'll be doing a lot more negative inversions. Uh, because it really does differ for each negative, and that's why I use Photoshop. Any software that gives you sort of more of an automated uh, result is going to work for some negatives and not for others, because every negative is going to be different, every film stock is different, and every capture method is a little bit different. So until AI kind of catches up to where, we're, uh, where we need it to be, I don't think we're quite there where we can just click a button and get those optimal results. The process that we're going to be covering today is quick. Once you get it down, I'm able to invert and color correct a negative within just a couple of minutes, and I always get spot on colors. And the added benefit here is that by doing it in Photoshop, we have layers that we can always go back later and tweak those colors if we decide that we didn't quite nail it the first time. But that's enough jibber jabber. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here's the negative that we'll be working with today. This is the same negative that we captured in last week's video. This is what our final image is going to look like. You can see that we've got very natural looking colors in the petals, and we've brought out a ton of detail and interest right here in the center of the image. In order to get between there and here, what we're gonna have to do is first, we're gonna invert the layer, then we're gonna remove the film base, we're going to brighten the image, and then we're gonna do a minor hue saturation adjustment at the very end. So let me walk you through each step. Starting with the inversion layer, what I do is I have a custom profile that I apply to all my images based on the scanning method that I'm using. In this case, I was using my DSLR scanner. So I would go to my preset, hit DSLR scan, and it will apply the file, the following profile. This is gonna be different for every single scanning technique that you use. Because 99% of my images are scanned this way, this is what I would apply. It's going to vary based on your methodology, but once you tweak these, you can just save it. So let me show you how I would do this. The first thing I would do is add a curves adjustment layer. And then I wanna invert our layer. So I'm going to grab the top right section and bring it all the way down and the bottom left is gonna go all the way up. Now I wanna go into each individual color channel and adjust from there. So for my images, I'm usually going to be adding a significant amount of red right about here. And to add, you're gonna be dragging down and to remove, you're gonna be dragging up. Then I'm going to be removing just the slightest bit of green. I think right about there looks good. And then I'm gonna remove a significant amount of blue because your negatives are always going to have a blue cast to them. Right about here looks good to me. And then on the RGB curve itself, I'm just going to brighten the image slightly. And this is a pretty good base for me to be starting with. So once you make your adjustments to what fits your capture method, you would just go to the top here, select saves curves preset, and then save it so that all you have to do in the future is apply that preset to your negative, and then you'll be at a good starting point to get going. Once we have our inversion done, I just like to rename this layer inversion. Next, what we have to do is remove our film base. And this right here should be a pure black so it's almost like we are setting our white balance using the black of the frame. So what I wanna do is remove any color that is in this film base. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this layer so you can see. I'm gonna click on top of our inversion layer, hit Control Shift N to add a new layer. I'm gonna name this Film Base. And then all I wanna do is use our dropper tool 
So I'm gonna click over on our color swatch and pull up the dropper tool and I'm just gonna click in the film base anywhere along the edge. Click OK. And now I want to use the paint bucket to apply that to the entire layer that we just added, our film base layer. And I want to subtract this color from the image. So I'm gonna to go to our drop down here and I'm going to choose subtract. Now you can see we now have pure black all around the perimeter of the image, but it's also gonna block up a lot of the shadows in our image and we don't want that. So I'm gonna start backing this off by sliding the opacity just until I start to see that color come back in the border of the film. That's a little bit too much. You can see here that we're starting to get it in the top edges. So I'm just gonna bring it to the right. So for this one, I'd say about 75% looks to be about right. And here's a before and after. And if you just look at the film base and the image itself, you can see that we've removed that color cast entirely. So if you look at our image now, you can see that it is way too dark. The colors look good, but we've blocked out a lot of our shadows and the image is way too dark. So what I'm gonna do is add another curves layer. And I'm gonna rename this one Brighten Channels. And I'm calling it that because we're gonna brighten each channel individually. So to do that, I'm going to switch back to the red channel. I'm gonna hold the Alt key while I click on the far right side of the image right here on this little tab. And I'm gonna start dragging in until we start to clip those highlights. Now you see those little specks here. I'm gonna let go of the option key just so you can see. And you have these little white dots. Those are dust, so I don't care if I clip the dust. We're gonna end up removing that with the clone stamp tool. So I'm gonna keep going with the Alt key held down until I start to see details of the actual image showing up, right about there. So I'm gonna back off. And this is okay, because again, we're blowing out the dust in the, in the film scan and that's totally fine. I'm gonna move on to the green channel, hold Alt, start dragging in, and right about here. And one more time in the blue channel. Hold Alt, drag in, and on this one, right about here. Now we have brought back all of that contrast and we still maintain the beautiful color. So here is before and here's after. Now all that's left to do is of course, I want to add just a little bit of saturation to bring in these colors a little bit more. So I'm gonna to go to my layer adjustment here. And I'm going to choose hue saturation. I don't wanna mess with the hue because we just spent all that time getting our colors right. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of saturation right about here. So there's the before and after, and you can see just a little bit more punch in these reds here in the center of the image. Now what I wanna do is I wanna group these layers, Control G, and I'm gonna rename this inversion slash color correction. Now I wanna go ahead and crop my image. Now this is a six by six negative, so I'm gonna be at a one-to-one -one crop. just gonna try and line up the edges and remove the smallest amount of detail as possible. Now I want to make sure that the center of the flower is as close as possible to the middle. So I need to go down and right there. We're lining up right on that crosshair. And from here, before I do any sharpening, what I'm gonna wanna do is remove the massive amount of dust. I'm not gonna make you watch that, but what I will tell you is I use a combination of content to wear fill for items like this long fiber across the scene. And then I will use the healing brush tool. And the reason I like the healing brush tool is that I can select a color swath like this area here. And as I go to remove, you won't see any circles or any areas. And it really does a great job removing that dust without introducing a bunch of odd looking pixels in the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the image and then we'll come back for one last sharpening.
Okay, well that was terrible. Uh, <laughs> That is the worst part of this process by far, but it is crucial. Uh, in this case, we're not going to be printing this particularly large, so I definitely went overboard, but it's always better to be a little bit conservative with removing dust. I did want to call out that I had an air bubble on this top right corner, uh, so I went ahead and, because there was also a gap between the petals, I just went ahead and used content to wear fill to just fill that entire corner, and I think it looks a lot better that way. So. Now all that we need to do is apply a little bit of sharpening and for this I'm just going to, um, usually I would pull this into an AI program, uh, sharpen AI and sharpen that way, but because this is not going to be um, an image where sharpness is critical, it's going to be covered in wax. We're going to be doing a mixed media print like I've mentioned. So. The sharpness isn't absolutely crucial here. I really just wanna make sure that this center area, which isn't gonna get as much wax applied, has a lot of sharpness. So I'm gonna zoom in all the way to the middle here. And I'm going to go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. And I'm gonna apply a significant amount of sharpening here. With film negatives in general, I usually do because they're always going to be a little bit soft. And I basically want to sharpen until we start to see that grain of the film. I'm going to make sure preview is selected. And if we look here in the flowers, I'm starting to see that film grain come in. So right around 175% is usually where I land. And three pixels radius and a threshold of four seems to work well. So here's the before. And here's the after, and you can see we brought out a ton of that detail, just giving a lot of sharpness here to the center. All right, well here is our final negative. I think that this looks fantastic. I captured the same image on my digital camera and the colors are an exact match. And it just goes to show you that this really isn't that tedious of a process, minus removing all the dust. Because once you have that preset, like I mentioned, really all that's left to do is remove the film base and brighten the image. Some images are going to be a little bit more complex, but for the most part, getting an image converted is really not that challenging, and it's definitely worth the extra effort. I applied this same treatment to about four negatives from the same series, and I think I'm going to invert a couple into black and white so that we could do some prints in both black and white and color next week. And like I said, I'll be applying a beeswax coating for a mixed media finish, and especially on these edges here where we have this soft area where there's not a ton of detail, we'll really bring out that texture and interest using the beeswax multiple layers. And who knows, maybe I'll even make something that looks halfway decent. So make sure you come back next week so that we can get some prints made. Thank you as always for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Get out there and make some images.